is Pam. It has been a long time since I've done an actual sit down floss tube video. Um, through the summer, I did a bunch of just vlogs where I just took a bunch of clips uh, for a week or two and strung them together and made some semblance of a video. And I figured it was high time I sat down and had a proper um, chat bring you up to speed on what's been going on in my life and um, what's been going on with my crafting. So how have you been? I hope you've all been well. Um, you may have noticed some activity on my channel in the last um, couple of weeks. I started a new YouTube series that I am posting under this channel name. I didn't set up a different channel for it or anything but I do have a playlist set up for it and it's called Coffee, Crime and Crafts. Um, the idea kind of came to me mid-summer, I wanna say, and I took some time mulling it over and trying to figure out if I had the time to dedicate to that and um, if it was gonna be worth my while to do it, but I have to say I'm enjoying it. I took a few weeks to research a, a couple of different um, crimes. Um, some are solved murders, some are unsolved murders, um, weird like international crimes. I have a couple of those on my list. So I took some time to research this to see how difficult it would be for me to pull information and to put enough together to make an episode and so far, so good. So a few weeks ago, I released episode one. And then last week, I, yes, that would have been three weeks ago. And then last week, I released episode two. Um, next week, I'll be doing episode three. And my plan is to do them bi-weekly. So every second Friday, you will see a coffee, crime, and craft video upload from me. And should I have technical difficulties like I had last week, um, if it isn't up by Friday evening, it would certainly, I would think, be up by Saturday. I had some editing issues last week and audio issues with my editing software that I'm using. But it's all good. So if you've taken the time to watch those videos, thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It seems to be getting some really good feedback. Um, I've been watching crime videos myself for years. I mean, ever since I can remember, I've been obsessed with weird crimes or unsolved murders or disappearances. And um, yeah, I've ever since I was a kid, I've been into that sort of stuff. So it just kind of seemed a natural um, thing to bring on board with my crafting videos. I don't know. Anyway, because I wanted to do like a stitch with me or a craft with video, but I couldn't see me just sitting there and yakking about, I don't know, daily stuff for 40 minutes to an hour. So I said, let's figure out something that I can actually intelligently speak about <laughs> while I'm doing a craft with me video. And anyway, there you go. That's the progression of the idea. So I hope you check those out. Um, like I said, I've been getting some pretty good feedback from people. I like the feedback. I like the, um, the comments and the people commenting on the episodes or asking questions or um, the interaction uh, is really great. So yeah, keep it coming. So let's get into a little bit of floss tube. Um, today's Friday and I had a very busy day at work. I worked an actual day shift the last two days. <laughs> uh, very different for me. I typically work Monday, uh, sorry, not Monday to Friday. My brain is scattered. I typically work um, 12 hour night shifts. And I do those in rounds of four nights on and then four days off, four nights on, four days off. And that just cycles like that. But um, I'm also the trainer at work. So 
we're putting off another training program. Um, next week it starts. So I will be doing Monday to Friday, eight to four, teaching in a classroom, facilitating a course for seven weeks. So that's going to take me from this coming week right up until the end of November, like the 28th, I think it is, 27th, 28th of November is our last day. Um, that's going to be challenging. <laughs> it's definitely a change to my schedule. I've done it multiple times before. I do it every year when we have to, when we put off this particular course, this training program. But um, every year, it's still the same thing. I keep shaking my head thinking, why do people love the idea of having a Monday to Friday, eight to four job? I have no time for anything else. Like I only have a couple hours when I get home in the evening. I only get two days off a week. Like I don't like it. <laughs> Most normal people would love it. I, yeah, no, give me my night shifts. I'll take those any day of the week. So for the next seven weeks, I'm going to be tied up with that. I, it shouldn't affect my ability to upload my coffee, crime and crafts videos. And it shouldn't affect my ability to keep up on my floss tube because I'll still have time on the weekends to do that. So let's get started on a bit of crafting. Oh, I have done a lot of crafting since you guys saw me last. Um, we're in, you know, with the whole COVID situation going on, I'm not going to get too much into that, but... Um, we don't have many cases here where I live at the moment, but we're still doing, you know, the physical distancing and wearing masks all the time when we're out and um, work is still slowly getting back to some sort of, we'll call it a new normal. But um, like many people who craft, um, this sort of thing is a stress reliever for me. And I just sit down with my stitching, my needlework, or my knitting, and Bob's your uncle. Love it. So I'm going to show you a few different things that I've worked on as of late. Um, this one really hasn't gotten much love lately, but it is, because it is October, and it is Dark October Stitching Month. Which is a hashtag, by the way, that was started by Michelle over at Cozy Egg, as well as um, Eclectic Possessions. Um, they set up this hashtag for Dark October Stitching, as well as Dark 13 Stitching. And so 13th of every month, I try to stitch on something a little dark or creepy what have you. This is a pattern by The Little Stitcher. I purchased it on Etsy. It's Arsenic and Old Lace. And I am stitching this on a random piece of this Charles Craft DMC Irish Linen, it's called. And it's 28 count. And I cut it down to size. So I have the two ladies finished, the two ants. They are done. The candelabra is done with the exception of the flame on the top. Um, I also have to put her glasses on. And I've started the dude in the chair. And I've got the, well, the floor that they're standing on, but also separates for the ceiling of the basement. I have that done. So I hope you can see that pretty well. It's a little hard for me to tell on that uh, camera lens. That's where that one is. Again, it hasn't gotten a whole lot of love because I've been really concentrating on Folk Witch, which I'll show you now in a minute, but that's that one. Um, another piece that I started for the Diversity and Inclusion Cell, 
And I also set up a hashtag, um, hashtag MLK Sampler Sal is the Martin Luther King, the MLK Sampler by Stone Street Stitchworks. And I'm stitching this on the other half of that Charles Craft um, T Irish Linen. And this was a sweet chart. I'm using my own DMC conversion. I liked the colors that she had charted, but I wanted something a little darker in the red, more of a burgundy. So this is where I am with this one. I've gotten quite a bit done on it, as you can see. So I think what I need to do is I need to finish the vine across here and fill in the letters on the top. And then just this, just this little bit here, I need to pull that back because I'm one stitch over too many. So I, I went over one too many in this corner. So I just need to pull that back to fix it, but that won't take me very long to do. What's that? I just love those little birds. Super cute. So that's the MLK Sampler by Stone Street Stitchworks. You can purchase that through her Etsy store. And I will try to link everything down below. I better make a note of that. So... Little Stitcher and Stone Street. The next piece that I worked on, um, Stitch North. People who are attending Stitch North, um, Caroline's um, retreat that was supposed to happen in September but got postponed and hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll go ahead in April, but we'll have to wait and see how everything goes. Um, because it wasn't going ahead in September, we kind of put together um, um, someone in the group suggested that we do um, like a smalls exchange, but do, a, do it via the mail. And we would do the reveal on the weekend that we would have normally have had the retreat. And so I um, got a lady's name from a random drawing that I had to stitch something for. And I had seen this earlier on. Like I had seen this pattern previously. Um, the creative curator. I think that's what she's called on Instagram. She had stitched this Biscornu that I thought was just super, super adorable. So adorable. So I decided that I was going to purchase the pattern and do that as well. It's called the Airmail Biscornu. And it's done by uh, Just Plain Jen. It's on Etsy, reasonably priced, and not only does it come with um, like the chart, I won't, I'm not going to give away anything, but she gives pictures and very, very well written instructions on how to, um, you know, how to finish it, how to sew it together, how to line everything up. It was, um, it took me a, a while to do it because I wanted to make sure I was doing it well enough to give to someone. And it was my first Biscornu I'd ever stitched, but it was super, like it was easy. If you follow the, follow the directions to the T, it's no trouble to put this together. So I made the Biscornu and then I also made a scissor fob because there's also um, a chart that comes with a scissor fob um, design. And 
sent that off. So I will insert some pictures if I haven't done so already. You may have already been looking at them. But I'll insert some pictures here of what the airmail Viscornu looked like when my friend received it. And I will also link this below in case anyone is interested in where I purchased it, the design for it. Now, it's been a long time since I've shown this one. I don't think um, anyone's gonna be surprised to see that I haven't got a whole lot of new stitching done on it, but this is my Death by Cross Stitch. Um, by Long, Long Dog Samplers. Um, I have been neglecting this. Um, I only stitched on it a couple of times over the summer because, again, I'm really trying to concentrate on Jay's Folk Witch piece. But this is where my Death by Cross Stitch is. The rest of it's all folded up inside in my Q-snap. But I am on the bottom right corner so this is a page down to here and then there's another page that comes down here so that's what i'm doing i'm finishing this right down to the bottom and then i'm just going to work my way across to the other side and then it will be done these are super 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 tiny 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 stitches i don't know how well you can see that there I'm actually stitching this on 25 count, one over one, on an antique white Lugana. And I just love this little bee. Look at him, look at this little guy. Love it. And um, little butterfly up here. And this, I don't know what this is, this funky, I think this is a hummingbird, like with its, with its beak in a flower. I can't be sure. And the thread, depending on the lighting, it looks black, but the thread is actually DMC 939. It's navy blue. Like a real dark navy. So that's where I am on Death by Cross Stitch. only I had all the time to sit and stitch instead of working. It'd be fabulous, wouldn't it? So my last cross stitch piece that I'm going to show you is Folk Witch. Now she's still in the cue snap and I'm not taking her out only because I'm going to go right back to working on her as soon as I finish showing it. This is Folk Witch by Gecko Rouge. I've had a lot of people still asking me questions about it on my Instagram. Sometimes people ask me about it in my videos, in the comments. This is stitched on 25 count. Um, I'm stitching it one over one. It's a kit from Gecko Rouge. So the kit came with the pattern, like the chart, and all of the threads and the piece of fabric, which is a piece of... I want to say this is easy count or easy guide. It's the one with the pink lines. I don't know what that is because I don't grid my fabric. I don't buy like, um, you know, I don't buy gridded, pre-gridded fabric and I don't grid my own fabric. But so here she is. Look at her lovely face. Oh my gosh. She looks so pretty. I love it. The detail is so, I just think she's stunning. I really do. I love like the little blush on her cheek and her lips. This little divot that's like, you know, underneath her lip, the shading. Oh, she just looks, I think she looks great. Um, so a lot of people think I'm on the last couple pages here, like a page over a page. I'm not. <laughs> This is actually a page and a half and a page and a half. 
And once I get that finished, I have one row of pages to do across the bottom. But the pages across the bottom are not as confetti heavy as this top corner. There are some confetti heavy bits, but there's also a lot of room for, there's background stitching, um, there's some big streaks of color from the folds of her dress and her apron. So I'm really hoping that I'll be able to plow through those bottom pages a lot faster. This particular page that I've been stitching on is super confetti heavy. It's like a stitch here of one color, two stitches of it there. You might have another stitch here, then two or three stitches there. Like it's just sprinkled all over the place. Um, so it's taking me a lot longer to fill this in because it's, it's, it's all leaves and shading and tree trunk and vines. And that's why it's so um, confetti heavy. But it, it'll get done. I'm getting close. I'm getting close. I don't know. Now that I'm going to be teaching for seven weeks, like that's really going to cramp my style when it comes to my stitching. So <laughs> I had a goal of trying to get that done by the end of December, like the end of the year, so I could send it back to Jay. Um, Because I'm stitching that for Jay um, in England. Jay goes by... Um, Oh my gosh, it's right on the tip of my tongue, Jay. I'll insert the name of her. Oh, Mortuary Stitches on YouTube as well as on Instagram. So I, Jay had purchased that kit and was having an awful lot of trouble with it and had attempted to start it, um, ended up ripping it back out wanted some help with getting it going and I thoroughly thoroughly love stitching full coverage pieces so I offered to actually stitch it for her and then send it back to her um she was having some really um severe health problems at the time and I just I you know I it was a shame that she had this gorgeous kit that she couldn't enjoy because she was having difficulty with it and um she may never finish it if she started it so I said ah send it to me I'll if you want me to I'll stitch it for you and I'll send it back so that's what we're doing so that is the end of my cross stitch so I have two knitting projects I'm going to share with you and that's it we're going to be done and I'm going to do very minimal editing because I want to go have a drink and sit back and relax and get some stitching done. <laughs> so I had cast on some socks um, a while back and I am pleased to announce that I have finished one of my socks. Here it is. This is in, uh, this is yarn from Michaels, believe it or not. It's really nice sock yarn. It knits up really well. I love the patterning effect you get because it's self-striping. And I knit these using a pattern. It's like a, it's a pretty vanilla sock, basic vanilla sock, but it's called Super Simple Cuff Down Sock. And the pattern is designed by Louise Patterson of Wildflower Wool. And I picked this up to knit um, with a Facebook group that is run by Caroline and Louise. I don't want to give away the pattern, but I'll show you the, this is what it looks like. And so these socks are knit cuff down. So I started at the cuff, um, worked down the leg, um, turned the heel. I have a regular, my favorite heel is just a, you know, a slip stitch, a slip knit, slip knit, and then purl your way back kind of thing. And so it's a standard heel and gusset. And then down to the toe. 
There was the toe. Ta-da. So I am now, I have cast on the second sock. Now this one I did mostly on my doing magic loop, but I finished off, I finished it off using my DPNs. This one I cast on and did the ribbing with my magic loop, but I'm going to try knitting this sock with my DPNs just to see, just so I can compare actually if there's any difference in my tension and I have my yarn all hooked around my needles here. <laughs> what am I doing? Here we go. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to knit these on my DPNs just to see if there's any difference in my tension and so on. We'll see how it goes. I don't know. Um, this one is stretched out a little bit because I have put it on to try it on. Um, this one seems to be a little bit more narrow, but again, I think once I try this on and it stretches out, it will match. So we're going to try this one on the DPNs the whole way and see how they do. So there you go. That's my sock project. So far along I am with those. Put this back in my bag. The yarn I'm using is from Michaels and I think it's called, um, I want to say this is called River think is the colorway and um, I'm gonna have plenty of yarn in that to complete my second sock so perfect pair that's the name of the yarn perfect pair and uh, it's a loops and threads yarn now the last project I have is my Murder She Wrote sweater. It is um, coming along. I have knit the two front panels. The back panel is completely done. That's finished as well. So now I've started the sleeves. So I, I need two sleeves and I need a collar. And then I get to sew it all together. So this is the first sleeve. I am almost done the first sleeve. Here is the cuff. Here is the, which I did in two by two rib. This is the pattern that goes around the sleeve, which will match the pattern that goes around the, the bottom of the sweater. And now I have started knitting in the fish on the top part. So this, the fish is kind of like right here on the sleeve on your bicep. And once this is on and <laughs> knit together, you can see it's going to be, it's going to be a pretty good, pretty good fit, I think. So my sweater that I'm knitting I'm knitting it bigger than your average fitted sweater. I'm knitting this in the size 42 on the pattern. Um, it's a unisex unisex sweater, but I want it large like, like a sweater jacket. And I'm going to have a zipper. I'm going to sew a zipper into it. And I want it large like... Angela Lansbury wears it in Murder, She Wrote. Like, I want it like a sweater jacket. So that's why I picked the larger size. And so far, it seems to be, it seems to be agreeing with me. Time will tell once I get this all sewn together. But this is where I'm at. So I just need to finish this sleeve and then cast on the second sleeve. And the collar, I think, is pretty straightforward knitting because there's no... There's no color um, work in the collar. The collar is just plain. So that is, that's all my projects I've got to share with you. Like I said, um, just a quick little visit. I wanted to give you a rundown of what I've been working on since you saw me last, what's going on, and what's coming up. What's coming up is a whole lot of this. <laughs> um, going to be concentrating 
the majority of my cross stitch time is going to be spent on folk witch my knitting i want to get this sweater finished so i can actually wear it because we're into fall weather here now and it'll be really nice to be able to wear that and my plan going forward from that i'm hoping to do some christmas stitching like i do every year in december so up until the beginning of december i'm concentrating on folk witch and my sweater that's the two projects i really want to have a good go at so I hope everyone is keeping well. I hope you uh, enjoyed seeing my projects. Feel free to give me a thumbs up if you liked. Uh, feel free to subscribe so you can see my additional videos and you can check out my coffee, crime, and craft videos. Um, hope everyone's having a fabulous day and I'll see you in maybe a couple of weeks. Alrighty, bye.